In this video, we will add and use surface constraints on a LiDAR dataset, which is covered in chapter 14 of the book, working with LiDAR using ArcGIS Desktop, which is available on Amazon. First, we will open Arc Catalog and find your last dataset. I will be using the Hopkinsville, Kentucky last dataset used in the previous exercises. In the table of contents, right click and go to properties and select the surface constraints tab. Here we will add multiple constraint files such as feature class files. We can enable show full file path of feature classes to allow us to use the feature classes located in different directories or folders. We can use the add and remove buttons to add and remove surface constraints. Using this method will let you add or remove surface constraints at any time. You can also add or remove surface constraints that are found under data management tools, last dataset tools. These tools include create last dataset, add files to last dataset, and remove files from last dataset. For the next few parts, we'll use the art catalog to add constraints to the Hopkinsville, Kentucky file. Create a new last dataset in the art catalog and name it Hopkinsville Surface Constraints. After this is created, let's open ArcMap to create the surface constraints that we want to apply. For the Hopkinsville last dataset, let's create the vector files needed to apply the constraints to the last dataset. We can digitize water features using high resolution imagery from the USDA NAEP aerial images. To load this image, we will connect to the USDA NAEP GIS server by opening GIS servers in the catalog, then selecting add ArcGIS server. We will connect to using GIS services and we will type in the address for the server we want to connect to. This server doesn't require a username or password, so we will select finish. We can now select the NAEP imagery from Kentucky and zoom to the extent of our last data set. We can now create a new polygon shapefile and digitize the water bodies in our image. Next, be sure to create two new attributes for this shapefile. The first for the depth of the water body, the second for the elevation. These values can be found in the book. Be sure to save your edits when you're done. We can also create a new polygon shapefile as a box over the area, but not totally within one of the boundaries of the original last dataset. Finally, we will add the five meter contour line shapefile that we created in the chapter 12 tutorial, creating a digital elevation model using a LiDAR dataset. We will then select these three contour lines in the northeastern quadrant and create a new polyline shapefile. We now have three vector shapefiles that we can use to apply as surface constraints. In the art catalog, we can open the properties window of the last data set and select the surface constraints tab. The selected contour lines can be added using contour as the height source and hard line as the surface feature type. The random box will have a height source as none and a surface feature type as hard clip. And the water will have a source height as elevation or bottom elevation and a surface feature type as hard replace. Next, open the properties of the last data set. All of the surface constraints are shown with checkboxes. If you do not want to include these constraints in any of the processing, they may be unchecked. For our first example, uncheck all the boxes except for random box. We will then use this as a proxy of our study area. Hit OK. We will now create a DEM. First, we will be sure to apply a ground return filter and then create the raster DEM using the last data set to raster tool. We'll use the natural neighbor bending option with a one meter cell size. Your result should appear like this. Next, we will turn off the random box constraint and turn on the water constraint. We will now create a DEM with the same tool and parameters as we just used previously for the random box. The result will be a DEM in which the water bodies are constrained by their elevation. Let's do one more example using the select contours. Turn off the water constraints and turn on the select contours. Instead of a DEM, we will create a 10 as we did in the chapter nine tutorial, exploring the 3D analyst toolbar and arc map. The result may look something like this. After processing, if you decide you want to entirely remove a constraint from the constraint properties, you can use the remove files from last dataset tool and remove the constraint. For this, I will remove the random box constraint. 
Now let's re-add the surface constraint we just removed. You can use the add files to last data set and add the constraint back in. Here we will change the surface feature type to hard erase. The result should look something like this. On this note, if you try to add a new constraint using a non-compatible surface feature type, such as a surface feature type of anchor points or hardline for the random box feature class, which is a polygon feature class, the add files to last data set tool will not run. My name is Eric. Thanks for watching. This video is produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research. With funding from the American View Consortium in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.